Hello everyone, it is Tuesday. It's a pretty hot day. Pretty hot day. So, I'm gonna talk about this topic. Is a chicken a dinosaur? Like, not, not like, well, I mean, is it related to a dinosaur? Is it a dinosaur? Is it a evolutionary stage of a dinosaur? We'll talk about that today.
That never happens. So let's have a chat on to our main topic of today's video is a dinosaur or sorry is a chicken a dinosaur more specifically um, science has stated that they believe that the Tyrannosaurus Rex has evolved into a chicken so the common household chicken that we have running around out in our yard um, some scientists believe that that one once upon a time used to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex is that really the case well Let's start off by saying to presume that we would have to have a long period of time. And I'm not going to get too dramatically into all of this. I, I don't think. I feel like I'm going to scratch the surface. I'm going to include uh, some, more link, uh, uh, some more links down in the bottom of this video. If you want to dive deeper into this subject, 
of evolution, dinosaurs, things like that. I'll give you at least one or two links down there. Uh, one specifically regarding the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the chicken. But we would have to have lots and lots of time, right? I mean, that's what science, some scientists are saying. I'm going to tell you guys, evolution is fake news. It's just out there to distract you from the truth, to keep you from actually pursuing what's real in this world. But let's, let's go the whole route. So some scientists say that the T-Rex is at least 65 million years old. In that presumption that we uh, state that they must be at least 65 million years old, we understand that by 65 million years of fossilization, there will be no actual organic matter of the original dinosaur left. All the bone will be replaced by fossilized rock. There will be no actual tissue left inside the bones. And that's just not true. Um, as we cut open dinosaur bones, we're finding living tissue still inside those bones. What does that mean? That means they're only a couple thousand years old at the most. Like, they're not that old. Those dinosaurs and people live together. The Bible tells us, this is creation science, guys. The Bible tells us the, the world was created in six days. What does that mean? That means that all animals that you see that exist today, and even the ones that you find evidence of that used to exist, that no longer exist, they all walked the earth at the same time that man did. We all existed together. Dinosaurs and people were all here at the same time. They didn't evolve into something different. We didn't come from a single cell amoeba or whatever it is that they, they say. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. You see, and even in order to make that assumption that we came from some small microscopic organism that nobody can explain the origin of because, you know, a science understands that no new energy or no new things are actually being created. Everything that exists only exists from something else and it's just changing forms. Energy is a constant, right? Science understands that. So if energy is constant, matter is a constant, then how can new things come out of nothing? They don't know. They don't know where new things come from. All they know is that what exists, they believe, has changed forms and come from something else. So let's just go down this path here. So in order to say that a T-Rex is a chicken, then we have to assume that the T-Rex is 65 million plus years old and that everything's evolving uh, over time. What's wrong with this scenario is that you look at the complexity of everything in the world that exists and you understand that in order for something to be this complex, there has to be a trial and error rate, right? There has to be a feedback loop. Do you guys understand feedback loops? Like if I do something and it's wrong, I have to receive an input back that tells me that what I did did not work. Let's try again and do it better next time. So who's getting this feedback loop? Nature? So we're going to consider nature a living, breathing, thinking thing, like it's a being now that has all powerful knowledge, that it can build a flying bird, not a chicken, I'm not saying chickens fly, but a flying bird that took us as man thousands of years to figure out how to fly in the sky, and we think that something can accidentally figure that out when our brains can't even compute. How can we think that something stupid and random can come up with something better than we can we can't even think through how in the world it works. And we have examples right in front of us. So we're saying that nature who had no examples whatsoever, just randomly created flight and hearts and stomachs and acid to digest food. Like there's another thing, nothing on this earth lives without eating something else. Everything has to consume, right? Well, you don't get a trial and error process with that. If you don't make stomachs right the first time and they can't digest food and you can't consume nutrients into a body, you don't get a second chance. There's no chance for a feedback loop because the first trial dies and there's no input back. So how do you get a try again? You don't. There's no feedback loop. So that right there is explains the farsity and evolution entirely, not just to the T-Rex from the chicken, but entirety. There's no feedback loop. Mother Nature is not intelligent. So let me help you out with some stuff, guys. Just some verbiage that we use that's just total utter nonsense. And maybe you're out there and you are, you're with me. Like, you subscribe 100% to creation, um, to creation science. You understand the world was created in six days. You understand that the world is only about 6,000 years old, guys. Not millions of years. It's about 6,000 years old. And you know this. But you might still say some things that put off a confusing message to those around you because you've been so saturated with the world, you don't even realize it. Number one. Mother nature. Guys, God is your father, but nature is not your mother. It did not give you life. You don't have to refer to it as mother nature. It sounds so goofy for somebody who claims to believe in creation and yet to call nature its mother. It's not your mother. Number two, nature finds a way. Nature is blind 
deaf, and dumb. It can't find its way out of a paper bag, let alone design or create a paper bag, guys. It didn't create anything. It's not going to find a way. Creation has been designed a way to get around these things. So when we see something that looks like adaptation of some sort, this is what God has designed into us as creatures to be able to adapt to harsher climates, to different environments. We're not changing dramatically into a whole new species. We can just tan our skin when we're exposed to the sun and that makes us darker. We, you know, uh, Darwin's finches get longer beaks at some parts of, of time and they go back shorter at other parts of time, depending on what type of food sources are out there. They're not changing out of finches into a fish. All right, that's it for my rant today. We might do more of these in the future. We might do more creation science bits in the future. If you guys enjoy the creation science moment here, then let me know in the comments below. But we'll get on to actual farm chores and back into reality here instead of this Darwinian evolutionary farce fantasy. Thanks for listening. So we can get it full. It's gonna take forever if you keep playing with it.
it's like this time. They never. Where one there one time on? The garden fence That's and the one. chicken fence. That one and that one. Yep, turn it on. That one's done. Done. You just turned it on and then off. Push it in and leave it alone. Okay. Good job. Is that one off? Yep. <laughs>
All right, guys, that's the end of nightly chores. We're just gonna go in, milk these goats one last time, and go play some board games with the kids. So that's it for us. Thanks for watching. Stay diligent. Till next time, peace. Okay, first thing that we say that we shouldn't say anymore. Mother nature. Guys, God is your father, but mother is not your nature. Or